Ladies and gentlemen, we need to talk about friend tech. Everyone is losing their minds over this app, okay? It came out of nowhere till about a month ago and it's crazy what they've accomplished so far. In about a month, their trading volume surpassed the total NFT trading volume on Ethereum in just a month, all right? And the top creators on FriendTech are earning more than six figures in just trading fees. And we're not talking about portfolio value. We're talking about trading fees. Now, some people might think that FriendTech is a scam. It's a Ponzi. Others might think this is the future. This is what Web3 is all about, social fi. So in this video, we're going to look at the pros and cons of FriendTech. Should you join it? Should you not? And try to answer the question of where we're at right now in the social fi timeline. All right, let's start off with what is FriendTech? It is basically an app that sells you one thing, and that is access. Access to your favorite content creator, maybe even to a company or a celebrity. So how FriendTech works is people make accounts by linking a wallet and their Twitter profile to the FriendTech app. This creates non-transferable keys to their room that anyone can buy and sell, all right? Buying keys gives you access to a private chat with that creator. And creators make fees as people buy or even sell their keys. So that's how those top FriendTech creators earned a lot of fees, all right? That's how they got 50 ETH in total trading fees is when people are just trading their keys, just buying and even selling. And it doesn't matter if their portfolio value is going up or down, they're still earning those fees. And finally, a friend tech token airdrop is coming, then you can earn points by just simply using the app. So in other words, it's an app filled with a bunch of token gated DM rooms, okay? And they're designed to be pretty small. They're, they use a bonding curve where every time you buy a key, the price goes up and vice versa. And about 150 keys, the price caps at 1.5 ETH, all right? So you can imagine the vast majority of these rooms have less than 100 people. So it's really about like super fans as opposed to other subscription apps like Patreon or OnlyFans, all right? where you're focused more on low price points and mass market products. Now, so far, there's nearly 250,000 users on FriendTech, which for a social app is actually very little, right? On the grand scheme of things, 250,000 is very tiny. So the question is, how can this get to a million users? And there are primarily three reasons why FriendTech can reach a million users. Okay, so the first reason is dopamine. FriendTech is an absolute dopamine factory. And I know a lot of the social media platforms that we use are to some degree, but FriendTech takes it to a whole new level, all right? There's nothing in the Web2 social space that gives you the same amount of euphoria when someone buys your keys, right? Or maybe gets you as tilted when someone sells your keys. It's kind of weird. Everything is just... 10x greater than it normally is, both the good and bad of social media, but it's just all on steroids because there's crypto involved, right? There's ETH involved. Now, reason number two is money, okay? There are multiple ways that you can make money in front tech. You can buy a creator key that ends up appreciating in value. You can earn fees as people buy or sell your own keys, and you can earn points to receive a part of that upcoming front tech airdrop. So again, why do creators do OnlyFans or Patreon? Right? Obviously, it's to make money. The only difference here is in many crypto apps, the users get to share in some of that upside and they get to participate in some of the money that's actually being made. There's a sense of ownership in social fi that just cannot be replicated in Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube. Right? You are literally owning shares of your content creator. You feel like you're more involved in the growth of your content creator. And you know, there's a reason why your content creator is your favorite because you, you either love their content or you love their personality and you support their career, right? But now with Web3, 
you get to own a part of that journey, right? You get to capture some wealth for that. It's not just investing, but you are, you are helping in a way that is also helping you, if that makes any sense. And the third reason is network effect, all right? So getting access to your favorite people is real utility, right? I'm sure we have a list of our favorite content creators or celebrities that we pay some amount of money to have private conversations with, all right? Not in that way, not in that way, but, you know, types of conversations that we normally don't get on Twitter or Instagram, right? Something a little bit more personal, something a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one, right? And as always, the more people on the app, the more FOMO that outsiders get, and the more pressure they feel to join the app, right? People start sharing screenshots of those private conversations, and then drama starts originating on Friend Tech, and then they repost it on Twitter or Reddit or other apps, and people just want to be where the action is now. Right? So those are basically the pros of friend tech. Now let's talk about the cons of friend tech and how that could lead to friend tech failing in the next few months. First and foremost, friend tech is highly speculative. The screen is literally filled with prices going up and down. And that is core to the user experience. And that could actually put a lot of people off, especially if they're not crypto native people. And that's the problem because the whole idea of a social app is for it to reach millions, hundreds of millions of users, right? For it to go mainstream. But right now, even till right now, yes, true. It's true that we got a lot of bullish news coming for crypto, but adoption is still very early for crypto right now. If you want to onboard a lot of new users, especially non-crypto people, it cannot be too speculative, right? To be honest, it was fun for me the first few days, but then I started uh, using it less frequently uh, after a couple of days because at that point, it just doesn't get fun anymore because no one is really buying or selling your keys unless you are a very big uh, Twitter influencer. But there's still a lot of people in the crypto space. There's millions of us, right? So if enough of them are still interested in friend tech that demographic alone is already enough to sustain friend tech for the long run but for the time being there's not a lot of people that are willing to spend even just more than 0.1 eth to be honest to be buying keys now the second reason why friend tech could fail is that content creators could potentially make more money with other business models and it's true that in general, OnlyFans creators can probably make more money trying to convince 10,000 people to pay them $5 a month versus trying to convince 100 people to pay thousands of dollars a month just to get access to their friend tech. And so there's definitely better alternatives for other creators. And that's the problem because if you cannot onboard enough creators in a short period of time, then the app just gets stale. Now, the third reason why friend tech could fail is it's Ponzi-nomics. All right, so let's address the elephant in the room. It's very clear right now that a lot of people in the app are just participating because they are farming for the airdrop, All right? So there was a period of time after friend tech was released, it spiked in trading volume and then it went down, All right? And then after they announced that there was going to be an airdrop, trading volume and activity increased again. So after the airdrop, it is very likely that engagement will drop, but it is still very hard to tell right now. You could argue that by next year, there'll be enough users that are actually in the app because they like it, but still, who knows, right? But there's this like shadow that is hanging over the app and it just makes people feel a little bit skeptical about the whole situation. And finally, the biggest reason why friend tech could fail is the lack of an exit plan for content creators. So let's take this for example. Imagine Twitter premium subscriptions, right? It's the kind of thing where I set up a premium plan on my profile and you get to pay $3 a month and I'm going to give you bonus tweets, bonus content for paying me $3 a month, right? And that's pretty much the entire arrangement and I might do that for a while 
But then at some point, I might just get tired of it, right? So I decided to end the premium plan, right? I can say, hey, thanks guys, that was fun. I appreciate you for being along for the journey, but I'm over it right now. And you might be sad because you enjoyed that content, but you weren't investing in the future of that content in some crazy way. And so you're not going to be super upset. That process of like gradually phasing out just does not exist on friend tech, right? If you get tired of the app as a creator, then you either have to hard rug your room by selling your keys and just pissing everyone off immediately, right? Or you could slowly stop engaging until at some point you just disappear and then that just pisses everyone off. Everyone will start selling your keys and that would leave the people who actually believed in you, leaving them disappointed and losing money, right? Because probably they bought it, they, they didn't get in very early and the ones that did, they sold it off of them. The point is that either way, it feels like a scam. It feels like a rug pull because people were investing in the future of your content and creators might not want to be a part of that, right? They might not want that pressure or they might just feel like it's a trap, especially given that most creators aren't going to be making a ton of money on this app. So this needs to change. They have to address that situation. Uh, but at the end of the day, there has to be some sort of sustainable revenue model and a very poor experience that does not involve speculation for SocialFi to really kick things off, to really acquire new users from the non-crypto native people, right? Because we need them for actual mass adoption for SocialFi, right? And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this is very helpful for you guys. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree with my thesis or if you don't, let me know in the comment down below. And also you can feel free to share your friend tech invite code down below. And also if you're interested in cryptocurrency trading and you want to support us, you can use our Bybit link down below and you'll automatically get 50 USDT in your derivatives account. My name is Ron. Thank you so much. If you've made it this far, you are a legend. Shana na.